Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of The Daily Crow. I am Chris Phillips of the Spurs Up Show coming to you live. Very, very excited to talk about the Gamecocks baseball series against number seven, Texas A&M. Uh, before I hear any of the jokes, yes, I'm very golfed out right now, about to head out to the driving range and it's it's golf season, what can you say? But obviously, very, very excited for this weekend series. Again, Gamecocks have the opportunity to upset the seventh ranked team in the country as Texas A&M comes to town. I'm going to break down the series in its entirety, obviously, before we get into everything. This is a broadcast presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek. SeatGeek, the best ticket buying app by far. You guys hear me talk about SeatGeek all the time. Uh, love those guys. Go download the SeatGeek app. Use the promo code SPURSUP to save $10 off your first purchase. They have tickets to literally anything and everything you can think of. Obviously, if you're going to any of the baseball games this weekend and you still need tickets, go to SeatGeek. They have those available. I've already checked. Use the promo code. Save yourself some money. But also NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs. Um, you know, NFL when it comes back around, concerts, comedy club events. doesn't have to be sports. Literally anything you can get tickets to. If you need golf tickets, you're going to any golf tournaments upcoming, um, any of the majors or anything like that. If you need tickets to literally anything, go download SeatGeek. Use that promo code SPURSUP. Save yourself some money in the process. SPURSUP, S-P-U-R-S-U-P. -S again, you can save yourself $10 off with that promo code. So go again, go download the SeatGeek app. Use that promo code SPURSUP. Save $10 off your first purchase. All right, like I said, going to break down this weekend series, Gamecocks. Taking on Texas A&M, the seventh-ranked Texas A&M Aggies. Texas A&M coming in this one, 27-11-1 overall, 9-5-1 in the SEC. Uh, beat Auburn last weekend in their SEC series. So Texas A&M obviously riding high. Uh, overall, we'll start with the pitching. Texas A&M coming in this one, very, very good pitching staff. 2.89 team ERA. Um, one of the big stats that really jumped off the page to me is their K-to-walk ratio. Uh, 433 strikeouts against just 113 walks for Texas A&M. So a staff that is very, very, very efficient, a staff that does a good job pounding the strike zone and has good stuff in the process, does have that strikeout pitch, can strike you out. Uh, weekend rotation looks like this Thursday, lifting the pitcher John Doaxis. Uh, probably saying that wrong. John Doaxis. 4-2, 1.76 ERA, the left-handed pitcher. Uh, Friday's left-handed pitcher, Asa Lacey, 6-1 with a 1.69 ERA. And then Saturday, a little bit surprising for a staff that is this good. I don't really, honestly, I really don't know if they're going through injuries or whatever. But TBA on Saturday, uh, again, which I thought was very, very interesting. Obviously, South Carolina also TBA on Saturday. But they have issues of their own, as we obviously know of. But again, two left-handed pitchers on Thursday and Friday. I'm very interested to see how this Gamecock lineup kind of combats uh, the lefties because South Carolina mainly I really feel like has faced the guys they faced that have been top notch have been right handed pitchers so you're facing two lefties this weekend who I mean again look at the records they're combined 10 and 3 um, ERAs both under 2 very 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 high level pitchers um, as far as hitting is, is concerned Texas A&M hitting 259 as a team uh, 361 on base percentage I think that's the big thing that sticks out to me that you know they're not hitting much better than South Carolina but it seems to me they're just much 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 better getting on base. Obviously, South Carolina trounces Texas A&M in the home run numbers. I think A&M's only hit like 21 as a team or so. Um, but 361 on base percentage. When you get on base, good things happen, and Texas A&M has been able to score enough runs behind that dominant pitching staff. Players to watch, obviously the first guy, Braden Shoemake, a guy that's been phenomenal, a guy that probably is up for the Golden Spikes Award, hitting 327, three homers, 32 RBIs. He leads the team in both average and RBIs. A guy that's going to be a tough out all weekend long for South Carolina. Another guy, Bryce Blanc, uh, hitting 283, four homers, which is the team lead in home runs. He's also 11 for 12 which for on, on, on stolen bases. So not only does he have that pop, but a guy, once he gets on the base pass, is very, very, very dangerous. South Carolina going to need to do everything they can to keep him off the base pass, uh, base pass this weekend. Um, another guy, Mikey Honer, hitting 327 in SEC play. Uh, has 16 RBIs in SEC play, leads a team in both those categories. So a guy, again, that has really flipped the switch. I think overall he's hitting something like 280 or something like that, but has really flipped the switch in SEC play for the Aggies. Um, moving to the Gamecocks, who's hot, who's not? Uh, who's hot? Left in the pitcher, John Gilry. Two and a third innings pitched. One hit, no earned runs, four strikeouts against North Carolina the other night. I thought by far his best outing, his best appearance, and really what we need to see more of from John Gilry. Again, pounding the strike zone, a guy. I've never questioned, always carries himself with a lot of confidence, has great moxie, has great mound presence, but a guy that I thought was very, very good the other night as far as locating all of his pitches, both off speed, his hard stuff, um, and it's the, that's the John Gilry we need to see more of. So very, very exciting stuff. Uh, who's not? Got to go with Noah Campbell. Four for 19 in his last 19 at-bats, dating back to the start of the Florida series. Uh, was over five with three Ks against North Carolina, and I'll be completely honest, I have no idea 
have no clue what the issue is with Noah Campbell. That's probably one of the one of the biggest questions, one of the one of the most puzzling things of this 2019 season is the lack of success from Noah Campbell after everything we heard from the Cape Cod League and everything he was doing. I have no answer as to why Noah Campbell has struggled so mightily as to why he has, but four for 19 again in his last 19 at bats for Noah. Um, Hopefully he can break through this weekend. The Gamecocks are going to need him for sure. Uh, for me, again, what to watch for, simply put, I mean, the title of this video, can this finally be the weekend that South Carolina puts it all together from a hitting perspective, pitching perspective, timely hitting, everything? Can this be the weekend they finally put it together and finally get the monkey off their back and win an SEC series? I talked about this uh, on the podcast that dropped today. I mean, just... You're, you think to yourself, South Carolina's got to run into some luck and win one of these things eventually. And what better opportunity now coming off a big-time win against UNC and you know, have the opportunity to upset. Again, Texas A&M's a very, very, very good ball club. But you do get them in Columbia at Founders Park. You know, will this finally be the weekend where South Carolina maybe just doesn't – maybe, maybe you know, wins two of three, but maybe, maybe even gets a sweep. Is this going to be the weekend? Because you feel like South Carolina – is going to have a weekend where they sort of break out and really do have that big-time weekend where they surprise some people. Will it be this weekend, though, is the question. For me, another huge question for this weekend, which Reed Morgan shows up for the Gamecocks? Again, Reed Morgan, your guy, he's been your stud, um, has definitely been the ace of your staff. I'm very, very glad they're letting him throw tonight, stay in that number one slot, but he was not himself last week. One bad inning really cost the Gamecocks on Thursday, which I believe he gave up six runs that inning. And really after that, I mean, it was – you're fighting from behind that entire game. Which Reed Morgan can show up for South Carolina? Obviously, I talked about earlier who Texas a and is throwing. John Doaxis, who's 4-2 and two with a 1.76 ERA. Reed Morgan's going to need to be at his best tonight to give South Carolina a chance to win this game. So I'm very, very intrigued to see, again, which Reed Morgan shows up. And if South Carolina can win the opening game of a series and build some momentum, something they just simply have not been able to do this season. Um... You know, simply put, one of the questions to me, does South Carolina have the arms to keep up with Texas A&M? We talked about a 2.89 team ERA, and again, listen, I'm one, the, the hitting's got to do what it's got to do, but pitching wins SEC series. Pitching wins big-time college baseball, and I'm not 100% sure the Gamecocks have the arms to keep up with Texas A&M, but I'm very, very just intrigued to see how Reed Morgan does on, uh, tonight. Cam Tringali tomorrow, whoever they throw on Saturday, I'm assuming it'll, it'll either be T.J. Shook, maybe Brett Carey, uh, never know, could mix it up with like a Dylan Harley, but I probably a TJ Shook. Um, but simply put, is South Carolina going to have the arms necessary to keep up with Texas A&M this weekend? Um, how much momentum, if any, will South Carolina carry from the UNC win? I, I don't really, I talked about this on the podcast as well. I don't necessarily buy into these big, you know, the midweek wins simply because we saw a couple weeks ago, South Carolina beat NC State and Charlotte, really felt like they could use that as a spark, turn around for their season, if you will, and go to Tuscaloosa and lose two or three to Alabama. It meant absolutely nothing. Um, but with that being said, it was a huge win the other night. Will South Carolina be able to maybe put, you know, capture something from that series and carry, carry it into this weekend and maybe upset Texas A&M? I, I don't 100% know. Again, I don't know that it means a ton, but I think it'll be interesting to just see what kind of energy this team comes out with again after getting a big win over North Carolina on Tuesday. Um, finally, what I'm watching for, again, a simple question, but can South Carolina's lineup do enough can it do enough? Because, we, again, we saw last weekend on Friday, this team's very, very fun to watch and is very, very good when they're hitting the ball out of the yard. We saw that Tuesday against North Carolina. Um, will they be able to do enough? Because the home runs will come. Will they be able to do enough otherwise as far as producing runs, getting on base, setting up multi-RBI uh, multi home runs instead of solo shots? Those small things to me are going to add up this weekend for South Carolina. Um, Simply put, key player for me this weekend is right-handed pitcher Reed Morgan. I think getting off to a fast start is imminent this weekend if you're trying to beat Texas A&M. And I think Reed Morgan needs to have his best outing of the season against the Aggies. Prediction overall, you know, I think it's foolish to pick the Gamecocks to win a series until they do so. So I've got Texas A&M winning two of three over South Carolina. I think their pitching is simply too much, and I'm not sure South Carolina has the arms to keep up with them. I think it's a series that will that will again come down to the final game, and I think South Carolina will have every opportunity to win the series. But again, I just don't think – I think Texas A&M is a very, very good ball club. And right now, again, until the Gamecocks do it, you simply cannot pick them to win an SEC series. So I've got Texas A&M taking two of three. Um, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we'll be covering all. Appreciate you guys tuning in. If you haven't done so, check out episode 91 of the Spurs Up Show drop this morning. A lot of good stuff on there. Until then, appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.